What's up guys, Brian here and I'm back again with another awesome video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get this amazing teal and orange color grade in Adobe Camera Raw, the raw file processing plugin that comes with Adobe Photoshop. Now, in this video, I'm not only going to be color grading, I'm also going to show you guys how I process raw files generally in Adobe Camera Raw and that will make the video to be much longer. So I'll drop a timestamp here on the video and also down there in the description box so you can get to the exact point where I color grade the picture in case that's what you came for and you don't have much time to waste but I bet you if you watch the entire video you learn a whole lot of things. Without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> This is the raw file opened up in Camera Raw. I'm using Photoshop 2020 in case my Camera Raw plugin interface looks different from yours. So in this video, we'll be getting from this point to this point. And I'm first going to show you guys how I, you know, do some other things before we get to the color grade as I mentioned earlier on. So I'll drop the timestamp where you can get to the exact point where I start color grading the picture. In the description box this image was shot by an amazing photographer i'll be chime i'll drop a link to his instagram down there in the description box so you can go check him out and give him a follow so the first thing i'm going to do here is just to tweak these basic things like the temperature if you pay attention you notice that the the temperature is too cool this looks like it was shot in the daytime and it's looking way too cool for that so i'll just take it up to 6000 i think 6000 is okay and as you can see at 6000 the colors are already popping so what i'm basically going to do for the color grade is to change the hue of these other colors in the background to teal and boost the orange that are already existing here in the building so the next thing i'll do is to boost the contrast if you notice the contrast is like really low so i'll take it to around 20 then i'll bring the highlight down to the end i want to you notice the sky is kind of blown out and there are still some details there can, that can be regained so bringing the contrast down actually adds you know bring back some of the details in the sky then same thing with the shadow i'll leave the shadow so that details that are there in the background will will be revealed as you can see this is how it was before now you can see some part of the building that was kind of too dark to be visible i'll also bring down the white so that some of the details in the highlights can still be visible same thing with the blacks so just with those adjustments we've gotten from here to here the next thing i'm going to do is to bring back the details in the sky if you notice it's still looking blown out so i want to get back some details in the sky much more than i got from the highlight slider alone so i'll use this adjustment brush tool to just make a selection of the sky that way i can edit some like just the sky without affecting any other part of the picture depending on how how long this part takes i might speed up the process so basically how this tool works is that you just brush the part that you want to make the adjustment and after you are done brushing it you just make the adjustment and it will affect only that part that you made a selection of so to see what you are selecting come to the bottom of the screen here you see this mask stuff just click on it to make sure that it's enabled so that when you mask you will see the part that you are making selection of the part that is red is where the selection will affect so what i'm going to do is just make a selection of the sky and avoid making selection of the building because when i make selection of the building there will be this very weird i don't know whether the correct name is color fringing or halo effect on the roof so i'll just quickly speed up this part and make very careful selection of the sky At this point, another thing that I'll do is to come down to the bottom here and enable this auto mask. This will help me reduce how much of the building is being selected. It, like it will use AI to separate the sky from the building and then reduce me actually selecting my chances of actually selecting the building as you can see here. But as you can see, it's creating that weird effect that I mentioned earlier on 
just look at the building at the border here you can notice that there's that very weird effect i'm going to fix that later on so let's just make selection around it first i've made selection around the sky i think that is okay i'm just going to deselect part the building part of the building that is affected so to erase just press the alt or option key on your keyboard and then brush the part that you want to deselect Okay, so I'm done making selection as you can see my mask is still on and the auto mask is also on. So I'll turn off the auto mask and then what I'm going to do is to reduce my brush size to make it very small. Then I'll brush in these other parts that are actually that have this weird effect. I'll just carefully use a very small brush to bring in those parts so that the effect won't be that obvious when I make my adjustment okay guys so i finished making selection to get rid of the red mask which shows that um that is where my selection has been made i'll just come back to this button click on the mask here to untick it and as you can see there's no observable change here but this dot here shows that this is where the selection has been made so you can anything i adjust here will affect only that part of the image so now let me make some adjustment i'll bring down my exposure to minus 0 0.75 then i'll bring up my highlights because i don't want the that yellow effect at the edge of the roof then same thing here I'll bring down my blacks just minor changes okay another thing I'm going to do is to desaturate the sky a little bit more I know I actually want to retain texture but if I make it too saturated much later on when I'm color grading the color like the teal and orange effect in this the teal effect in the sky will be like too much I will draw attention from our actual model right here so that's the first thing i did let me show you the before this is before this is after you can see how much detail we brought back although we still have that weird effect at the border see before after i'll now go back to my main tool by clicking on this zoom so that the main interface will come in the next change i'm going to make is going to be at the hsl sliders adjustment section this is where we are going to do the actual color grade this is the color grading part so let's get started with it already so for the oranges i'll i'll tweak it a little bit more towards this direction i'll take it to minus 15 so that it will have like it will look more orangey you see if i take it this way it's looking different this is the look we are going for so i'll just bring it down by minus 15 then the yellows notice the yellows is in the heart the building behind and the coconut she is holding i'll bring it down to minus 80 so that it will give me that punchy orange look same thing with the greens look at the greens i'm also bringing it down to minus 79 then the aqua which will affect what she's wearing i'm taking it up so that it will change to teal so let me take it to 28 then the blues, I'll bring it down to minus 70. Hope you are noticing the color changes. What I'm doing is tweaking the already existing colors, making them to look the way I want them to look. So I made the dress to look teal. I'm now changing the blues in the background to also look teal because we are going for complementary color color grade. That's the teal and orange. We now look at the sky. You notice that. That stuff I'm saying, the teal in the sky is not too much, but if I come back to this brush tool here and increase the saturation, you notice that the teal will be like very pronounced. So I want it to be like very subtle. So that's why I didn't raise the saturation of the sky. That's why I actually reduced the saturation of the sky. The next thing I'm going to do is to go to the saturation tab. This is where I also play around to get the result that I want. I'm going to boost the orange 
so let's say 26 then the yellows to 50 then the greens i'll bring it down to minus 33 i don't really want the greens to be saturated the greens is affecting the coconut and a few other things in the image so i just desaturate it a little bit more remember my target is just for the model to pop and the background to be a little bit more low key then the aqua i'll boost the saturation let me show you the aqua the aqua is the dress so i'll boost the saturation so that it will be one of the most saturated things in the in the image that way i will go there fast the next thing i'm going to do is to saturate my blues the blues remember the blues is in the background almost everything in the background was blue before so i just boosted by let's say 14. then the luminance this is also another important tab this is where you make some colors brighter than the others that way you can draw someone's attention to a particular color and also draw attention away from another color so i'm going to bring down the saturation of my blues we notice now it's now making my sky to pop a little bit more can you notice that see so i'll take it to minus 23 then the aqua I'll lift it to plus 14 that way the dress will the yeah what she's wearing will pop a little bit more then the yellows i'll boost it again to around 13 then the oranges i'll bring it down to minus four so let me show you the difference now this is before this is after see how we have gotten that teal and orange grade already so now another thing i'm going to do is go back to my adjustment brush tool and adjust the color here in this sign post behind her if you notice this thing is distracting so i'll just bring down the saturation and the brightness a little bit more so that your attention won't be going there when you are looking at the image the aim is for the attention to be on the model the model alone and maybe the other part of the image will just add to the aesthetics of the image not just be the way the attention is going so i'll make another brush just as we did before and i'll quickly go through it so that you don't have to watch me do it all over again Okay, so I've made a selection of the background. The only thing I'm going to adjust here is to bring down the notice the selection from the sky is still affecting your body it's too much. So I'll just reduce it a little bit more. The adjustment from the sky, not the selection. Then I'll boost the highlight to around 36. I don't want it to look like it was really tweaked. I want it to still look real as I'm doing this for then this one minus 10 then the saturation let's take it to minus 34 okay so now look at the before and after this is before you see how it is so bright and it's drawing attention to itself unlike the model so that's why i had to you know bring down the brightness of it another thing i'm going to use um, the adjustment brush to tweak is this red color here and this yellow color here since they don't fit into the teal and orange color gray we are going for I'm going to make a mask of it and then desaturate it that way it won't draw attention from the image because if there is a bright red here and you're looking at the image here, I will go to the bright red so I'll just take these other ones to zero and then reduce the saturation alone okay so there we are let me show you now where we are at this is before all the adjustment that I've made with the adjustment brush and this is after and you can see so much attention is going to the model and less attention is going to the objects we have tweaked although it's still looking good in the image the next thing i'm going to tweak is my split toning i don't really use this tool a lot i just use it once in a while what i'm going to do is under my under my highlights i'll just add a little bit of teal so let's take it to so and yeah then i reduce the saturation to just five then under my shadows same thing i'll add warmth like orange then i'll bring down the saturation to around five then i'll slide this balance 
slider towards this other side so that more of the tail in the highlights will be so that the tail in the highlight will be more powerful than the orange in the shadows i just prefer it that way another thing i'm going to do i'm going to add vignette again i like doing it my own self so this is minus 10 i don't want it to be very strong why i'm even adding this vignette is to draw a little attention like much more attention to the model because if the sides of the image are darker than the middle your attention will go to the brightest part of the image which is the middle which is where the model is so i'll just change my mid midpoint so that it's not that powerful let me show you before after just a little just a touch this is the final place i'm going to make adjustment on this image here i'm just going to boost the colors to, so that it will look more vibrant so i'm going to increase the saturation of my blues to around 29 then i'm going to increase the saturation of my grains to around 19 then my red saturation to around 10 and then i'm going to add some more magenta to the shadows so let's keep it at 10 so let me show you this is before after just messing around with this stuff so we got it to look way more vibrant and you know saturated without using the like the saturation and vibrant slide over here so we got the image from here let me show you let me show you let me show you we got the image from here to here so that's it for this video guys i hope you learned a lot tomorrow i'm going to actually edit this picture in photoshop we are going to edit and color grade it and get it to the final point so if you're interested make sure you come back to this channel tomorrow if you are new to the channel click on the subscribe button ring the bell icon next to it so that you get notified when i upload that video and many other awesome videos in future if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up if you have any question drop it down in the comment section if you have any contribution drop it down in the comment section don't forget to check the description box for the links to all the things that i mentioned in the video thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next one